Hey folks, why haven't you subscribed yet? Tell them, Lily. Hey folks, hope you're all having a good day. Um, today I'm sitting here in the one place that feels the most like home, I guess. Uh, I decided to come and make a small video here short video maybe uh, in regard to streams uh, this here is a fairly large creek or stream uh, this is where I, I come here a lot uh, it's been in a couple of videos before um, there is a lot of uh, wildlife and nature here. I decided to shoot a little bit farther away just so you wouldn't be looking just at me but at the scenery itself. Um, these things, there's several different um, water habitats. Uh, in regards to here where I live. Um, these streams are, uh, these tend to be a little slower moving. This one does. Um, so it is a little warmer than the mountain streams, a little larger. And uh, the fish are a little different. Uh, now this is headwaters of, a, of the Cumberland River. And uh, as I had said in one of my more recent videos, um, this is a, a a stream where there is a uh, threatened species. Uh, there are um, several uh, threatened species in the county where we live. Uh, these, um, this particular fish is threatened mainly because its ha habitat is small. Um, it is a uh, species of dance. Uh, I'll leave, put the name there where you can see it. Um, uh, there are, there's a, um, in a stream nearby called the uh, Roaring Ponch Creek there is a, an, 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 a uh, species of crayfish that is unique to the area to, to, or to that stream in particular. Um, there are these kind of habitats have a lot of life in them. Um, this one has rebounded a lot since the coal mining days, as I just stated before. Um, this, uh, a wild stream like this has a lot more biodiversity than something like a, um, a pond. A pond tends to be limited, uh, especially man-made ponds. They are limited to uh, what's stocked in them is in regards to fish. And for the most part, the fish that are stocked tends to be catfish sometimes, but more predominantly uh, bass, either largemouth or spotted, and some panfish. A lot of those are bluegill. That's for fishing, basically. And uh, the pond can survive with this, just those two species. The bass eat the sunfish, and the sunfish eat the small bass and insects that live in the pond. But this is more wild. You will have, in this stream, there is the um, spotted bass. Sometimes here we call them the uh, Cherokee 
if I remember right, it's Cherokee bass. Some people call it Kentucky bass. Um, they look very similar to largemouth. Um, Delos are a little smaller and they have, uh, their mouth's not quite as big. Uh, there's also rock bass and um, a couple other fish that would be considered in the same lineage. Uh, there's several different species of panfish along with a variety of small chubs and minnows. Uh, darters, dances, chubs. Um, there are um, red horse suckerfish and um, other bottom dwellers. There's catfish. I will later speak on the vernal, pool, vernal pools or ethereal pools that tend to crop up along the flood bank or flood plains along these and other uh, low lying areas. Uh, those are tend not to have fish, but they do have a lot of um, amphibians and insects that breed in them. As for, in regards to insects in here, you have a uh, thing like dots and fly larvae and, um, and uh, dragonfly fly larvae, damselfly larvae. Damselflies and dragonflies are flying all over the place here, as well as butter, butterflies and other things. Mosquitoes will nest in stagnant pools that form along the sandbars. Um, there are uh, water beetles and other things. These, these type of places are full of life. Uh, there are, uh, up the stream, there are uh, grasses that grow along the sandbars that are home, and trees that, the trees that overhang, they're home to insects and other uh, spiders and things of that nature. Uh, even the rock bars itself is full of life with spiders and uh, insects crawling along. Uh, snakes, both water snakes as well as black snakes, or uh, king snakes, rat snakes. Uh, the two venomous snakes, copperheads and rattlesnakes, come to feed here. Toads come here, which will bring things like the hognose snake that feed on toads. Uh, Eastern garter snakes will be around streams like this. Just about any snake you can find in an area will be found in a place you can find here. Um, bear and deer will come. The water's fresh, the water's moving. So moving water is a little more, a little more safer to drink, not a lot. Uh, the, the water is full of bacteria, both beneficial as well as bacteria that can be harmful. Um, algae blooms happen, uh, but the running water staves that off a lot. So you won't see the red algae that can bloom in the pools or a great, like you won't see a pool full of just green with algae when the water is flowing into it and flowing out. Um, this is now a healthy stream and can remain so as long as we take care of it. Some, some of the things we can do to take care of it is one, don't litter. Don't pour oil and things into the, around them. Uh, allow the trees to grow naturally along the banks, trees and plants. Uh, this will stop erosion and um, help reduce flooding as well. This, this river, this creek, it floods regularly. Uh, a single tree can, can t take up thousands of gallons of water within a season. Uh, and they really reduce the amount of water that flows downstream during a flood. Um, it won't completely annihilate it, but if you remove all the trees along this creek, when a flood happens, there's going to be thousands upon thousands of more gallons of water that flow down the creek. Uh, without the trees, it will erode. The, the silt and stuff, the banks will erode back. The dirt and debris from this erosion will pile into the pools and uh, fill those in. Uh, it'll, if the erosion is bad enough and, the, and it's thick enough with water, it can hurt the wildlife within it. Uh, 
Um, these are amazing locations that need to be protected. Um, as you've seen throughout the video, I've put a few uh, videos of uh, of wild or of uh, fish and other things, uh, and just a general look at the uh, creek itself. Uh, I just love these low places. Um, the next place I will discuss will be a vernal pool that's, uh, or an ethereal pool. Um, it's near the house. Uh, so it is a temporary pool. I also do rivers uh, and ponds as well. Uh, I mean, it's they're man-made, but they do uh, have a lot to do with these. Or they, they do attract wildlife. That's what I was meaning. Um, this has been a, a little rambly, uh, I guess, but I do hope you enjoyed it. It's uh, a nice location to just come and chat. And uh, I hope you all have a great day. Stay safe and uh, get out and explore. It's great. Nature's great. <laughs>